What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp architectural skills video for you. So in today's video we're going to model out some barn doors for our barns inside of SketchUp. So one thing I did want to note is we're going to touch on some principles for modeling for layout here. If you want to get more in depth on that, um, we talk a lot more about these principles in the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course which is currently open for enrollment. So um, that course specifically focuses on modeling for SketchUp up and layout. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link to that in the notes down below. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so what a lot of people want to do when they create something like these doors is they want to get in here and they want to model this out super in-depth inside of their SketchUp model. That's not necessarily the best strategy in here, because if you remember, we have an overall model in here that's going to contain our barn, it's got our site, it might have a house up here depending on what direction I decide to go with this series. But if you model out all of the little parts and pieces of your barn right now, or the little parts and pieces of your doors, what ends up happening is you start ending up getting a ton of geometry in here, and this could rapidly get pretty unmanageable. So you want to model out your door with your real world thickness, but if you actually want to have detail for your door, you probably want to do that in a separate detail model that you would reference inside of layout, just to keep this model size small. So a lot of the time you wouldn't necessarily model those out to that level of detail. So in this situation, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the rectangle tool to draw a door that fits over this opening. And note that a lot of the time you might make this a little bit wider and taller than your opening. I'm going to go ahead and just make it flush to this for this video. But we're just going to push pull this and we're going to assume that our door is made up of a 2x4 frame. So it's going to have a thickness for your 2x4s, first of all, which is going to be an inch and a half. And then we're probably going to have another sheet of plywood over top of it. So like a decorative sheet of plywood that looks like wood beams in here or wood uh, panels. So let's assume we're going to have another layer in here that's going to be another like 5 eighths of an inch or something like that. So we'll say it's going to be 5 eighths of an inch. So what we've got is we've now got a door that represents the thickness of our door. And then we need to model our trim on top of that. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to triple click on this. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make it a group for now. And one thing we might want to think about doing is we might want to think about going into the working view of our barn so that we don't have all of our extra site stuff in here. And what I've done is I've created a single door. And so you can see how that door is now showing up inside of my outliner. Well, I want to go ahead and right click on this and I want to rename it. I want to rename it barn door. And we're going to say three foot four inches wide by seven foot zero inches high. And the other thing you probably want to do is you can go ahead and right click on this and you can make it a component rather than a group. So um, because we're going to make copies of it, we probably want to make it a component. Then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that into my barn group um, because we want this to turn on and off with our barn. So if we ever have a view where we want to show like our site, we don't want to show our barn, we want to make sure that that's inside of this group so that we turn when we turn that off, everything turns off. But now we can go back into our working view and we can go ahead and we can model out our trim that's going to go on the face here. So we're going to double click inside of this door and I'm going to triple click on this again and I'm going to make a group and I'm going to call this backup. And then on this face, we're also going to model out our trim. And so we're going to assume that our trim on here is going to be made up of, we'll go ahead and call it one by sixes for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw another rectangle across this face like this. Then I'm going to offset that in by the thickness of a one by six. So we're going to say five and a half inches, just like this. And then from here, we can go ahead and we can draw a line right here. That's to find our central point. And then we're going to move it up by two and three quarters of an inch using the move tool in copy mode. So just select this edge, tap the M key then hit the control key in order to go into copy mode and single click. And we're going to create a copy that's 2.75 inches high. We'll create another copy that's five and a half inches deep. And so what we've done is we've roughed out our trim on this face. And you can go ahead and push this out by the thickness of whatever you want this to be. So in this case, I'm assuming it's going to be a one by six. So it's going to have a thickness of three quarters of an inch. We can go ahead and push pull this out as well. 
And so that's kind of the face of our barn door. Well, we also want to have a piece of wood running across right here. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw a line from this corner to this corner. And then we'll do the same thing where we draw a line in here and we want to draw a line that's perpendicular. And you want that to go 2.75 inches. And then you want to draw a line the other way that's going to go five and a half inches, just like this. And then you can take both of, you can take both of these edges and use the move tool in copy mode to move a copy right here and move a copy right here, just like this. And then you can erase out this extra. Notice that this intersects with this geometry just like this. So all you have to do is just push pull it out to the thickness of our door. So we can do the same thing down here. And this gets a little bit different if you want this to be an X. So let's say we did want this to be an X. You could just do the same thing where we'll draw a line to this corner. And then you can just select all of these edges and use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy here and to create a copy here. And in this situation, you may need to draw in an edge just to make sure this whole thing is a closed in face. So like this one, for example, you may need to use inferencing in order to finish this shape off. And then we'll just push pull this out to that same thickness. And you can erase out the extra edges in here if you want. And then we can just use the move tool in copy mode to copy this face down to right here. And then we can just push pull this out by that same thickness. So now what you have is you basically have your barn door in here modeled the way that you want it to be. So I'm gonna triple click on this to select it all. I'm gonna make it a group and then I'm gonna right click on this and I'm going to drag that group that I created into my barn door. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to name this trim. And so now what we can do for simplicity's sake is we can apply a material to our backup and apply a different material to our trim because we have those in here as two different things. You may need to go into your trim group and if faces got created in here, you may need to delete them out just by doing a shift click just like this. But now I can add a red material and so what I want to do is I want to find a red color that matches the red that I've placed on my barn. So in order to do that, we're just going to click on the button to create a material. And we're just going to call this barn door red. And we're going to uncheck the box for use texture image. And we'll just drag this over to this red color for right now and we'll adjust it in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make it a red color. I'm going to click on OK. So that's a custom color that I've created that now I can apply to my backup material group. So notice how when I applied this right here, it applied it to the outside of the whole group. We don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is we're going to double click inside of here and we're just going to apply it to this barn door red group. You can see how our trim is a different group. So if for whatever reason we wanted a different color of trim, um, probably not that, but if we wanted a different color of trim on here, you can see how our trim is a different group. So it's easy to apply the material to that group. And so now what I want to do is I want to find this color, this red, and I want to go to edit. And I want to use the color picker to match the color of an object in the model. So in this situation, I'm going to click on this button right here. Then I'm going to click on my barn and you can see how what that did is that adjusted my red color so that this matches my barn so and then from here you could get a little bit more complex if you wanted to so if you wanted to you could model out your uh like your track over your door um, in this situation i'm probably not going to do that unless i'm trying to render it to show how it actually comes together it would be better off for you to create that as a detail model um, that you show inside of layout but now what I want to do, so I just want to take this barn door and remember that we created it as a component and I just want to make some copies of it. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm going to tap the M key, click on this corner, and I'm going to tap the control key in order to enter copy mode. And I'm just going to create a copy right here. And then I'm going to type in times four and hit the enter key. 
So remember that when we do this, we need to make sure we're staying organized um, because we need to be able to turn these doors on and off um, if we need to. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go into my outliner and now you can see that I have these five doors in here. Well, I wanna take all of those and I wanna right click on them and I wanna make them a group. So in this situation, we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna call these barn doors. And so then we're gonna go into our tags and we're gonna add a tag that's labeled barn underscore doors. And then we're gonna take this group, this barn doors group, and we're gonna put it on this barn doors layer. So now, if we need to, we can turn the doors on and off. All right, and so we touched on the idea of not wanting to model out the detail of these doors right here. So the reason for that is because we don't want all the extra geometry and all the extra stuff contained inside of that. So what we would do instead is we would create a new SketchUp model for the actual detail of these doors and we would reference that inside of layout. So the way that would work is I'm just gonna create another SketchUp model. So for this model, we would get more detailed. We would actually model this in depth. So the way that we would do that is we would go ahead and we would model out our door, same way we did before. So a seven foot, zero inch line, three foot, four inch width, and then we would offset this in by three and a half inches. However, in this situation, what you might do is you might model these out as different pieces. So for example, let's say that I was going to model this out with different two by fours. In this situation, probably what I would do is I would model these out as different parts and pieces. So I'm just gonna use the push pull tool, give this a, a thickness of an inch and a half, And you may need to make that a group first. So I'm gonna make this a group. I'll push pull this out an inch and a half. So you can see how what I'm doing in this situation is I'm modeling this door with each piece being its own piece. And I'm gonna reuse as much of this as I can so I can save time. But I'm gonna model out my door. All right, so then I'm gonna model out my plywood sheet. So I'm gonna give this a thickness of 5 eighths of an inch. So we'll push pull this 5 eighths of an inch and we'll triple click on this. We'll make this a group as well. And so you may wanna start labeling these as you go too. So in this situation, for example, we could call this plywood or beaded plywood. How about plywood dash beaded? You could call this two by four, two foot nine inches long. Then do the same thing over here. And honestly, I probably should have labeled these as components, but that's all right. And I've actually downloaded a custom material for this. So I just pulled an image of a beaded plywood off of, um, off of a lumber supplier website, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that. So I just saved it as a JPEG. So I'm just gonna click on the plus button. We'll go ahead and call this plywood beaded, we'll click on use texture image, and then just go find the image that you brought in. We're gonna click on okay, we're gonna apply it to this face. And so notice this comes in way too small. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna resize it by going over to materials in the edit tab. So I'm gonna give it a width of maybe four feet or maybe six feet. Here we go. And you might wanna you can see how there's a seam right in the middle of this. You might want to position the texture just by right clicking on it and moving it around. Probably not the biggest deal in the world in this situation, but you could definitely do that depending on what, what you're trying to do. In this situation, I think this is gonna work just fine. There's still seams in here, but that's okay. And then the other thing you can do is you can colorize this texture. So you can check this box for colorize, and then you can click and drag on the color wheel in order to adjust the color. And if I was matching up exactly, what I would do is I would go into my other, um, I, I would go back into my barn and figure out the exact RBG, RGB value of this and enter it in my uh, RGB settings. This ought to be good enough for right now. But now what we have is we have our framing on the back. We have our plywood right here, and then now we can model out our front or our trim. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle right here. 
offset this in. And again, this is going to be five and a half inches. And we would just model our trim out the same way that we did before. But again, we would do that by modeling out the different parts and pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to model that out, but I'm going to speed it up because you've already seen me do it once. Just note that I'm breaking these out as different pieces now. All right, and so now what we have is we have a much more detailed door piece that we can use for actual construction. And so the nice thing about the way that we've created this is we can also explode it. And one thing you might wanna do if you're creating an exploded view is you might wanna make a copy of it. So you might wanna make a copy over here using the move tool in copy mode. But then you could take this one and you could select all your trim and you could move it off your wall like this. And we're going to go ahead and select this whole thing. We're going to make it a group and we'll just call this trim. We'll call this frame. And then we've got our plywood sheet. And I'm going to take all three of these and hide them real quick so I can get rid of all this extra geometry. But now you could take this detail view and you could reference that on your layout drawings without having all this extra geometry kind of junking up or slowing down your overall barn model. And so let's take this elevation and let's send it to layout real quick. So let's do a camera. We'll go to parallel projection and we want to do this front view right here. And so let's go ahead and let's go to our default styles and we'll just pick maybe a shaded with texture style. Yeah, go with shaded with textures. And we'll go ahead and create a view. Let's do an add. And we'll just rename this barn elevation. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll send this to layout. And then from there, we can select a template file, just like we did in the last video. And so now we've got our barn in here. We've got this referenced, and we can go ahead and we can pick our scale. So um, within SketchUp model, we want to select a scale that's close to what we have. So we'll do half inch equals one foot like this. But in order to show the actual detail for our barn, what we want to do is we want to reference this other sheet. So we want to save this as something we can find. So we'll do a file. We'll call this barn doors dash detail. So this is our detail model for our barn doors. And we can go ahead and create a view We'll pick our shaded with textures again for right now. We'll hide this door. I'm going to adjust this style real quick so I don't have model axes in it. And then I'm going to update the scene. And we'll go ahead and tell it to update the selected style. And we'll just call this door underscore exploded. And we'll save it. And then within layout, what we want to do is we want to add a reference to that door. So we want to do a file, insert. And we want to go find, find that model. So the barn doors detail model, we want to insert it like this. So what that's going to do is that's going to insert this view into our model. So now what we've done is we've created our barn doors up here where you can see them in your model and you can pull dimensions off of them and stuff like this. And then you have a more detailed model that you're referencing separate from that. So we've got our exploded view right here. So by doing this, you can have a certain amount of detail in your SketchUp model for visual. And then if you need to show more, you can create a detail model in order to do that. So we talk way more about this in the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, which I will link to in the notes down below. But as a general rule, you want to minimize the amount of geometry that you're putting inside of your main model. And if you need to get into the, like the nitty gritty little details, you model that out separately in a detail model. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys